Hello all, Andrew here, and what I'd like to do in this video is explain the PID for those that fly quadcopters. Uh, this, this, is, this is a software that runs in your flight controller that helps stabilize the flight of your quadcopter while you are doing your acrobatics, racing, or whatever you want to do with your quadcopter. The PID stands for Proportional, Integral, and Derivative. So let's talk about Proportional, or what we call the, the current position in the quad. So let's assume that with my quad, I enter a signal to give it a roll to the left. So Proportional were the only signal that I was giving to the quad. Let's assume that Integral and Derivative don't exist. Then I give it a signal to move it, to roll it to the left. So the quad will start to roll. So the cycle will say, wow, you're giving it a large stick command to roll it to the left. I'm going to start to roll to the left. However, I then, so for the first cycle, I give the roll to the left command, and then I let up on the stick. However, the quad being, a, it does have mass to it, it will keep moving in that direction. So what will happen is it will go past the point where I've registered on my sticks where I want the quad to be. Once it goes past the point, then the proportional say, oh, I need to go back. So now it enters a signal to go back to hit the appropriate spot. It wants to get to here, but because the proportional is such a, a large amount of change, in the position of the quad, it may overshoot where it needs to be and then move too much to the right. So when it checks, it's like, oh, you've gone too much to the right for the next cycle. I'm going to need to put some more roll to the left back in to get me to the appropriate position. So it has, what will happen is it will oscillate. There's so much large force being placed through the proportional that it will oscillate, it will not be flyable. The other problem with proportional is if it is in the correct position, so assuming that my stick control told my quad that I want to be here and I'm just slightly a few degrees off of where I need to be according to the stick programming, then proportional will know that, okay, I'm not going to trigger, because if I trigger, I'm going to overshoot based on the amount of movement or the amount of signal it puts to the motors for that current cycle. So again, the cycle is that flight controller computer saying, I need to put a lot of roll over to the left, but since it's already, uh, it's already close to where its home position is, it knows that, okay, I'm not going to apply proportional anymore because I'm going to overshoot and start oscillating. This, again, brings us into where we need the assistance from integral and derivative. So on to integral. What integral does is it provides a plot of the previous signals going into the flight controller, and it determines that, that should it continue to move towards the point based on my previous alignment or should it change how much that it's applying towards getting me into this particular position. Now the proportional was a big signal or big movement to get us into that area but the proportional will get into a threshold and say I'm not going to apply any more of that large, cor large correction to get it quad where I need it to go the integral will come in and say, you know what, based on how much correction was going in, we can estimate that we need to put in, we need to continue with a certain amount of correction, though not as large as proportion, to get us into the position. Because if we do put a large proportional force on it, the quad's going to overshoot. So this, so once the proportional, so just say the proportional was running getting us into position, then the proportional will cut off because it reaches a threshold, and then the integral will come into play 
and just slowly get us into the appropriate position. So it's giving us some fine tuning. But on its own, integral is just too slow. It doesn't have the large proportional correction. So if we were to fly just on integral, then what would happen is, is the quad will just move too slow and it'd be too sluggish to our commands and then potentially it will crash. So the next part is derivative. And derivative is, well, where do I need to be in the future cycle so that I'm appropriately aligned? So this is a upcoming. So where's that upcoming signal need to be inputted so that I do reach that particular area? So we may have a, a large proportional input that's moving the quad from here, getting it to here. We're not quite there yet. Integral will come into play and give us a slow correction. And then derivative, we'll see, okay, well, based on how the proportional was moving me in, and I see how the integral wants to continue to maintain a small corrective force, the derivative could say, if that continues, then in this cycle up here, I'm going to need to put in just a certain amount of correction so that once we hit here, we're at the appropriate spot. It's actually trying to determine the most optimal cycle in order to apply its force to get that correction. So if the cycle were to be out here, so we one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, just say it knows based on what's happening that cycle eight with the proportional and integral doing its thing, it will calculate where they will get the quad in a certain configuration, and then this will calculate just enough extra correction to be in the perfect position. Now alone, the derivative can't do that because it relies on these other two inputs in order for it to make its calculation. So without the other two, the derivative just can't do what it needs to do because it can't predict the future based on the inputs coming out of here. So it knows the threshold of proportional when the proportional is going to cut out. It's going to know that the integral is going to be applying so much continuous momentum at a much smaller amplitude, so to speak, than the proportional. So it may need to say, okay, you're going to have to give it one more amount of push to get it into that position and if the sticks haven't changed then it will do that in the most optimal way so we get there as fast as possible. So in conclusion let's try to run a very simple simulation with the quad is we're going to start at cycle one and we're going to put a large stick order in to move it to the left or roll it to the left. So for the first cycle, we get a roll to the left, and we need to be at, and let's put this in again, we need to be at from here to this particular configuration. So the first cycle comes in, these, are, these cycles are in milliseconds. So for the, the really good pilots, they, they, they can feel how sluggish or how loose or how tight the quad is flying and it's really based on these, these PID amounts that are coming in. So let's assume that everything's working great for us. So first we have a signal that comes in that triggers our proportional. So P is going to attempt to move it. So the next cycle, let's just say for cycle two, that we're not quite there yet. P work also integral is working and derivative is working, but you have to think of it, let's use an analogy that like they're yelling. And proportional is yelling far more than integral and derivative. Just because we put in the stick input, it needs to move in a large, um, it needs to move a large amount to get to this new position. The proportional is much louder, it drowns out the other two signals. Its correction is far more. So we get to number two, and let's assume the same thing's happening. We got P, which is very loud. 
I and D are also working as well, but P is so loud saying, I need to get to this position. We're not quite there yet. But at three, at three, we know that proportion is not going to be running anymore. So it's going to be silent. And let's assume that for one, here's the signal on one, we get the two, we're not quite there yet. We just say we're really close at three. I is still working to get us into position. Now, no longer P is yelling, P is not screaming out its signal. So I is going to do what it needs to do is slowly get into position. But D is going to come into play as well and saying, you know what, I, I can help you out. I'm going to give you a little extra push. So once cycle four comes around, D basically gives us enough correction because it knows what I is going to do. It can predict what P and I are doing, that it can give us just that little bit of correction so that when we hit cycle four, we're bang on exactly where we need to be. So hopefully that helped give you an example of what PID is doing when it's manipulating your quadcopter. If you have any questions, please put those in the comments below. We'll let the community uh, answer those out. I'll try to answer them as best I can uh, using my limited engineering knowledge. But there are other YouTube videos that you can go and see that will give you the more of the engineering explanation of what is happening. There are also some other good videos where you have the quadcopters which are balancing objects upon, on top of themselves. And those are based on some really, really intricate algorithms with PID as well as knowing the mass that's on and having center or sensors sorry to understand okay what that mass is and how it needs to make the appropriate corrections in order to keep those masses in balance.